Hi, I'm Andrew Woods. I'm a research engineer and consultant with Curtin University in Australia and uh, I've been uh, involved with the stereoscopic displays and applications since, uh, conference since 1991 and chairing it since 2000. I'm John Merritt of the Merritt Group in Massachusetts and I've been interested in 3D stereoscopic displays since uh, I was in my early 20s and using it to analyze aerial photographs and ever since then I've been trying to study more and more about the how the eye and brain works to give you a, a picture of what's outside and binocular disparity caused by the separation of the two eyes is one of the biggest depth cues and, and uh, since the 1800s people have sat in their living rooms and looked at this and they may be about to start doing that again. People can see depth with only one eye because of all uh, so-called monocular cues to depth. And when you add in a second eye from a slightly separated viewpoint, then the scene looks a little different from these two viewpoints, and the brain uses those differences to get a much better idea of where things are in three-dimensional space, and we call that stereoscopic depth perception. For a high quality stereoscopic display you want the amount of leakage between those two channels to be very low and um, there are a wide range of technologies being used and all of them will be um, will have a certain amount of crosstalk and the amount of crosstalk will vary from one display to, a, to another and uh, you know, analyzing these displays the mechanisms by which the crosstalk occurs is very different from one display to another as well. Um, so, um, you know, m moving forward, I think, um, you know, it's, it's a very important image parameter of stereoscopic displays that needs to be uh, documented and studied very well and uh, uh, that will allow people to um, both develop displays and the consumers to know or to um, separate uh, one display from another as well. It's one critical issue, particularly with the display. Probably a more important issue with stereoscopic displays is the content. Um, it is very easy to generate poor 3D content that will give people eye strain, but um, achieving uh, very well aligned content is extremely important to giving a, a fatigue-free uh, 3D viewing experience, which is possible. You know, there are some very good 3D movies out there at the moment as one example of that. Um, but uh, one problem is that uh, computer generated images are very easy to achieve, but live action 3D filming is uh, a lot harder and uh, a lot more effort needs to be put into uh, achieving very well aligned 3D footage. So it's not just the display, but also the content that you show on these displays as well. Uh, another thing about ghosting is that any of the 3D displays where there are, like the old stereoscope, two separate channels going to the eyes from two images through two eyepieces, they always had no ghosting at all because there's no crosstalk. So um, head-mounted displays and the old Viewmaster that kids had with the round reel you drop in all had no ghosting. The ones with mirrors, the original ones, had no ghosting. So it is possible to have stere stereoscopic displays with zero ghosting because there just isn't any mixing of the channels. But for now, almost all 3D displays will be sharing the same screen and there will be some sort of crosstalk. The rate of change has just been phenomenal in the last few years um, and uh, you know, just seeing um, products released into the consumer space and the deployment of 3D cinema over the last probably four or five years now is, is incredibly fast. Um, some of the technologies that we were looking at and using back in uh, 1990, 91 are still now a, an important building block of what are current, some of the current displays. So, um, you know, it's good to see some of those display technologies evolve. Um, you know, some of the display technologies that were being promoted as being uh, the next best thing and will be the solution to all of these problems, like very focal mirror displays, have totally disappeared. Um, so, you know, as we've moved along, the display technologies have, have changed remarkably. The reason for doing 3D doesn't seem to be in question anymore. 
uh, it's very popular and it's the latest thing. Uh, there's so many applications coming out now that the conference I hope will continue to look at both the engineering research as well as new applications where 3D can be applied. The entertainment aspect is the um, where the, um, you know, the, the, the big floodlights are on at the moment. Um, but that's also opening people's eyes to what's possible in other areas. You know, the, the success of the movie Avatar was um, an incredible um, exposure of the worldwide community to what 3D can do and um, you know, the, the incredible possibilities that 3D movies and 3D technologies provide. And uh, I think that's been a, uh, a very good, you know, shining light for what's possible.